Do you believe in ghosts? Me? I'm not so sure. But then again, I'm not so skeptical as to totally rule out the possibility. I know a lot of you do have faith in ghostly apparitions, and that's why tonight it brings me great pleasure to introduce another story from Dr. Creepin's Vault. Kindly submit it so that I could share this story with you. So, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we look into ghostly matters. It's time for you to join me around the campfire and listen. I notice she only comes here when it rains. She must appreciate the weather much more than I. It's always cold here, no matter the time of year. At night the sky was bright, with stars open and wide. A truly marvellous view over the waters. But when it rained, the fog and clouds seemed to smother this cove. But that was when I loved to come here. Over time, I noticed the girl that came here also. She was new here. Well, as new as a few months. Her beautiful brown face was rare around these parts. From my shelter, I'd watch her when she would come to the cove. It was almost a ritual for her, it seemed. I'd watch her vehicle park near the rocks. She'd sit in it for a few minutes, then get out, stretch, and take a deep breath, breathing in the mists and the cool New England air. Her hair would start to shimmer as the rain fell upon it. She would close her eyes, then walk towards the rocks on the beach. There was a rock outcropping in particular that she liked. It stuck out into the water, with foamy waves crashing on either side. I too loved the salty, cool sea air. It was the reason I came back here so often, and during the rains. I felt calmer and more relaxed. I watched this girl for months. So much so I began to feel at ease around her. Her sense of peace made me want to talk to her. But I was scared. She was one of those people who exuded such quiet power of confidence. She could cow you without even looking in your direction. Over time I think she noticed me, but waited for me to make the first move. Gathering myself, I waited for the next rains. It rains heavily, at least twice a week here in New England. I could hear the car now. I smiled a bit inside. <laughs> I had a friend to share the cove with. Hopefully she won't be offended by my uh, presumptions. She sat on the rocks, taking a drink of whatever it was she drank each time. She wore shorts and sneakers frequently, and she exposed as much of her skin as possible to the water, which doused her every time. I began my walk to her spot. Although I felt a sense of peace emanate from her, I had no wish to disturb her. She probably came here for the reason I did, to drink in the serenity. I was beginning to wonder if you were ever going to say hello, she said without looking back. It shocked me that she spoke, as though she'd wanted me to come over all this time. I gathered my wits. Hello, I stuttered. I see you like this cove as much as I. My name's Laurie. A pleasure to meet you, I said, extending my hand. She turned round and looked at me with eyes of fiery amber, and then took my hand. Hello, Laurie. A pleasure to meet you. My name is Abigail, but please call me Abby, she smiled. Come, sit, Laurie. The stones are wet, but I like it. It keeps me cool and the mist feels good against my skin. Thank you so much, but that is your special place. Mine's over there, I mentioned, pointing behind me. Abby looked over my shoulder and smiled. Very well sheltered. You can't see it from the road. 
and the trees could hide anything in there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's why I like it. I can <laughs> kind of spy on beachgoers from there, I said. How long have you been coming here? Abby asked me. <laughs> for years. <laughs> it used to be a place for me and my boyfriend to come and visit, before the town expanded. There weren't that many people there. We tended that hidey hole of mine, <laughs> ours. Help those trees and bushes grow from seedlings to what they are now, I said, smiling. You two did good work, even though I didn't notice you there the first few rainy nights I came to your town. Between the mists and fog, I guess I got lost in my own thoughts, Abby said, taking a stone and tossing it gently into the water. The surf camouflaged the sound of it hitting the ocean. If you don't mind me asking, where is he? Your boyfriend? Did you two break up? No, I said, trailing off. He, he died some time ago. This place helps me keep his memory alive, since it was our place. I'm sorry for your loss. Would you like to talk about it, or just sit and watch the surf? I'd like that, watching the surf with you. I feel safe with you here. <laughs> I don't know why either, but <laughs> you, you have this air about you, I told her. <laughs> I get that a lot. Don't ask me why. My dad used to tell me. Abby stood on the slippery rocks as though she'd been a gymnast with perfect grace and balance. Abigail, he'd say, you're a curious one. You didn't get that damned curiosity from me, nor your mother. Are you part cat? Abby made a pointing motion downward, emulating her father pointing down at a little child. Come on, Dad. Why would you say that? It's something about you, little girl. I'm your father, and she's your mama. You should be coming to us to learn things and feel safe, you know? He'd say, all confounded. Instead, we come to you. You know so much, and don't seem scared of anything. I feel safer around you than my biggest friend. Abby's eyes grew solemn then, lost in thought. She smiled softly. You must have really loved your dad, I said, smiling at her. Still do. He's an ordinary old man. <laughs> but it's my pops, she said, sitting once more. Tossing another stone into the sea, her hair matted to the sides of her head. My Jason was a special one. Both of us college educated, loving science and the ocean. It's why we came to New England. To be near the water. Study the critters that lived here. <laughs> Help protect them. I told her. Abigail noticed my sigh and asked if I was okay. I told her I was, and then continued. Well, I tried to continue, but couldn't find my voice. Abigail turned around fully to face me, the water touching the small of her back. Laurie, what killed you and Jason? She asked, touching my shoulder. I couldn't deny her amber eyes. We'd come here to guard the turtle hatchings one summer night. Jason was closest to the water, as he made sure the path was clear for the babies to make it back to the sea. It was raining hard that night. Lots of fog, mist and wind, I began. I was getting my rain boots from the car. I watched as Jason used a stick to clear rocks and seaweed from the beach. My phone rang and I went to turn the ringer off so I didn't disturb the turtles. I heard a yell. I thought Jason was calling for me to come down. When I turned his way, I screamed in horror as some scaly thing clawed at Jason's body. Abigail held me steady as I recalled the memory. Go on. <laughs> I didn't think... I reacted. My man was in trouble. That black-eyed sea thing had my man. Jason would not have hesitated to save me, 
How could I do any different? Grabbing the fishing rod, I raced to Jason. There was so much blood. Jason had been surprised. He never even had a chance to fight. His back was torn to shreds. He tried crawling to me, to yell a warning, but fear and rage filled me. I told Abigail, as my hands shook. I planted the weak end of the fishing pole in the thing's eye. It hissed and lashed out. I opened my shirt to show Abigail the place where the beast ripped open my chest. God, the fire in my chest overcame me. I fell to the ground as it pulled the rod from its remaining good eye, I told her. With what little strength I had left, I tried pulling myself and Jason away from the beach, to the hidey hole. In my mind, as I pulled us slowly up the shore, I liked to think Jason was saying, I love you, through those bloody lips. But I knew he was dead, his eyes locked onto mine forever. I hadn't realized it, but Abby and I had walked back to the hidey hole. She was sitting me down, and I hadn't realized it. I couldn't pull Jason anymore. I'd lost too much blood by then. The creature had plugged its eye with seaweed and had come back for us. It grabbed Jason's leg and pulled him to the water's edge. I could only protest weakly. I watched as it crouched at the water's edge, waiting. What, what did, did it do then? then? Abby asked. Laugh. It gurgled a laugh, I said. As the last of my life spilled onto the beach, I noticed the sands turning and being pushed up in various spots. The turtles, Abby said quietly. Yes, the realization dawned on my dying brain. It had come to snack on the helpless baby turtles. We'd gotten in its way. We would all die that night. Jason, me, and those turtles. That thing would eat us all, I said, realizing I could no longer cry. I was a ghost, a dead thing myself. All I had was this beach. <laughs> they, they never found us, did they? I asked. Abby shook her head. Laurie Alverson and Jason MacArthur were presumed washed out to sea during the storm of 07. Along with several other beachgoers, Abigail stated. Did you notice anything else on this cove, Laurie? I shook my head and looked at her. You and Jason were not its only victims. But you have an attachment, as well as that one there. Abigail pointed south. I could barely make out the shape of a male about a quarter mile away. It killed him too. But the energy that used to be Laurie Alverson spoke to me first. I looked at Abigail, much as her father must have. Who? What are you, Abigail? I asked. She sat next to me and looked out into the sea. Look, there, Abby exclaimed, pointing at the sand. They churned and moved. I hadn't noticed. In the years since my death, this is the first time I've been here to witness the emerging of the turtles. <gasps> Abigail! I cried out. A beautiful sight, yes. But I fear dinner time is upon us. I say we do a few things tonight. Let's give those babies a fighting chance and avenge the murders of Laurie Alverson and Jason MacArthur and that old fart down the beach. What do you say, Laurie? Abby asked, her amber eyes glowing now. I say, yes. We sat quietly for a while. I don't know for how long. But soon, a scaly figure would emerge from the water and mists. We both smiled.
Thanks for taking the time to drop by and watch this video. You know what would make me a happy doctor? Hitting that like button, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Go on, I've got plenty more stories to tell you.